There are many questions about the next steps. Um, let me just rattle a few off, and you can, you can tell us what you feel is important. Uh, Shaman says, what books of the Bible should I read first? Deborah says, how do I choose the right church? People ask about baptism. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that follow the, that salvation moment? Well, baptism is important. Uh, it's an outward sign of this inward commitment that you have made to follow Christ. And so you don't have to be baptized in a church, but that's a good place to get baptized. You know, John the Baptist took people to the river and baptized them. And so I've baptized people in swimming pools and, you know, all kinds of things. So, uh, but it is good to have somebody that believes that's like-minded with you to do the baptism for you. So baptism is very important. And uh, I think that being in church is very important. And it's not because church saves you, but you, you go to church to learn, to, to have new friends, to, make, to, to get into relationship with people that are gonna believe like you and be like-minded with you. you. You wanna hear the word. You wanna be involved in corporate worship you know, the singing of songs and praise and, and worshiping God. And if you're in the right church, there's many good opportunities to serve through that church, which is something else that's important. So how do you know when you're in the right church? Well, you, you want to be in one that you know is teaching the proper doctrine. And what I tell people a lot of times is don't get discouraged with trying to find a church. You might go to 10 that you don't feel right about, and then you'll go to one where you just feel like you're home. It's just right. Mm -hmm. You just feel right about it. And so many people, if they try a church and they get hurt, or they try a church and they feel like people weren't friendly, or you know whatever the case might be, then they just want to ditch it all and, yeah, and forget up. it and give up. But it's not, you know, like I said, Church doesn't save you. I don't really like it when I say to somebody, are you a Christian? And they tell me what religion they are. You know, Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. He died so we could have a relationship with God through him. He comes to live on the inside of us, promises to never leave us nor forsake us. But it is important, I think, to be in church. And the other thing that's very important is the study of God's word. And I would recommend that people begin in the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs are also very good. Psalms are very comforting. Proverbs are full of little, little wisdom points. You can read one chapter of Proverbs and there might be 20 or 30 different points in there of, I mean, things like be honest, don't gossip, don't slander, just things Very practical. That, just very practical advice. Probably most people would tell you to begin with the Gospel of John because it's, it's just one of the really, really beautiful ones. Yeah. But anywhere in the New Testament is good. However, I would probably go along with, you know, beginning with, with one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, because it takes you from the birth of Christ all the way through to the, the death and resurrection yeah. of Christ, which you need to have a good basic understanding of those things. There's many, many, many different translations of the Bible available today. I've taught from an Amplified Bible for over 40 years. There's many other really good new English versions that are put into a little more modern language. I like the Amplified Bible because it kind of gives you a little deeper understanding of some of the Greek words, which I don't read Greek, I don't speak Greek, <laughs> I don't know Greek, and so it helps me be a little more of a scholar without having to go get a degree in in the Greek language, but like I said, there's, there's a lot of them. So find one that you understand. And mm -hmm. you know what we, what we suggest, a lot of times people just need a direction. So I would just say, if you start with 30 minutes a day, if you can dedicate 30 minutes of your day, and to be honest, if that's too much, then start with 15 minutes, but start somewhere and spend some time studying the word. I like to say study rather than read mm -hmm. because you can gloss over something very quick and not really get anything in it. I would, I would study the word each day until you feel that you have at least one point that you can 
lock into and say, wow, right. that's, you know, I didn't know that, or that that's really good, or... And something to you know, chew on throughout so, the yeah, day. Yeah, something to meditate on and think yeah. about. I mean, like, so many people don't feel like anybody loves them. And just to know that God is love and that He loves you and He loves you unconditionally, I mean, for some people, that very one thing would be life-changing. So the Word of God is the food that we need for our spirit man to help it grow after we become spiritual babies in Christ. Yeah. So baptism, getting in a good church, a good word-based church where you really feel like you're growing. Don't just go somewhere just for the sake of going, but make sure that it's helping you, that you're learning, that you're growing, and that you feel like it's helping you change. And get involved enough in something that somebody knows you're there and that somebody's gonna miss you if you're not there. We need some kind of accountability. Yeah. You know, there's too many people that just go sit on the back row of a church. They don't want to be involved. They don't want it. They don't want anybody to bother with them if they're not there. But to be in community with people requires some accountability, and it's it's good for us. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of somebody spying on you <laughs> or being nosy, but it's yeah. just it's good for us if somebody says, "Hey, we haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. Is everything okay?" Everybody wants to know that somebody cares about them. And then the other thing, very important, and these are not like, I'm not saying this fourth because it's fourth in, in importance, but is prayer. But let me say that prayer is really just talking to God. It's talking like to God about, about everything. It's talking and listening. Yeah. It, it, you're not going to hear God like you hear from another human being, but you are going to He's going to give you understanding. He's going to speak to you. The Bible talks about the still, small voice. And God uses His Word to speak to you. God will begin to lead you and guide you, and you'll have a knowing on the inside of what's right and what's wrong. But you need to just begin to talk to Him. God, help me with my day today. Forgive my sins. Mm -hmm. Use me to be a blessing to somebody today. You know, Yeah. help me driving traffic this morning without having accidents. I mean, you, you don't, God is not just for disasters and emergencies or when we think we're over our head, because to be honest, we're all over our head every moment of every day. That's very true. <laughs> without God, we're not going <laughs> to do very much. And so yeah. it's uh, one thing's for certain. If you have a sincere heart, you don't have to follow some kind of a formula. You just go to God like a little, little child.